This is Sage Stone Man. He's one of the most talented and creative natural builders that I've had the pleasure of meeting since I first became interested in natural building about three years ago. And in this video, we'll be visiting a small town in California where Sage has built a beautiful representation of what's possible when we build with natural materials. This home costed Sage only $200 to build and has helped him live a life free of debt, which has in turn given him the freedom to explore his creative abilities. And in this tour, you'll see how truly simple and affordable life can be. You'll also hear wise words from a man who has found his connection to nature and his expression of himself in the most beautiful way. Thank you, Sage, for inviting me into your home and for being true to yourself. And I hope that anyone watching this can receive some of the guidance of your words as well as become inspired in any way that this video speaks to them. Enjoy the tour, and now let's meet Sage Stoneman. Hello, my name is Sage Stoneman, and today we're going to be touring my little cob home. Only cost me $200 to build it. <laughs> so, I choose to live the way that I do because it's a matter of mental health for me and emotional health, physical health as well, spiritual health. It's just health. It's, a, it's about being well. Um, I believe that the society that we have created together as humans is sick and it makes people sick. And so to be well, you really have to go out of your way. Um, or I'll speak for myself. I really have to go out of my way to feel well in the society that we live in. So this is my way of doing that. And that's why I try to live as close to nature as possible. And I try to create my home in a way that feels like it's a reflection of nature, or better yet, just a direct expression of nature. Because I feel that humans are just like any other animals on the planet. We know innately how to create a habitat for ourselves that feels healthy, um, but we have forgotten in a lot of ways. And I think that that's kind of what we see in the cities that we build as humans. We're seeing like a forgetfulness of our human nature and our innate knowing of how to create a feeling of home. So that's what I've done here is like, it's an inquiry into my own feeling of what home is made manifest, made visible. And then I'm working with the certain limitations of what is most readily available and, uh, and in abundance as a natural resource and setting a limit, in this case, one of spending as little money as possible. So this house was built with the earth right below my feet. And this stuff here, you add water to it, you add some straw, and you have cob. Um, this is obviously a very affordable way to build because this is free. So I also used wood from the property that I harvested. So framing was free. The majority of the wall system was free and that you know, not only is affordable, but it also grounds you to the place that you're in because the home is now an extension of the environment, literally. And it's also a very free form material. So it allows for unlimited artistic expression, which is necessary for me. <laughs> so here you can see an example of the sculptural nature of Cobb. And the design for this wall was mostly inspired by the materials that I could get secondhand. So all of this glass was free and I just arranged it in the most artistic way that I could discover for myself. And um, this is the earth right beneath your feet. And uh, this is reclaimed. And then the, the wood that you see, if it's round wood, it's eucalyptus that I harvested right over there. And if it is dimensional wood, for the most part, it's just reclaimed from some other building project. And 
You can also see like burlap sacks from the coffee shop to hide the billboard tarp. This is like an American Airlines advertisement on this billboard tarp. Um, that's what I use to waterproof most of the roof. So there's billboard tarp and pond liner and it's sort of patched together. Um, so with the intention of using only reclaimed and natural materials and spending as little money as possible, I was able to create this for about $200. Uh, I, I spent money on screws and some glue and silicone for the skylights up in the loft. Um, everything else is free. <laughs> So for me, being connected to my environment is so important that I actually don't even have a door, <laughs> which is not practical in a lot of ways. Uh, but doors are also kind of annoying. They're just in the way. Um, another reason I don't have a door is because I love this shape. And the way that I cobbed this, I really didn't leave myself much to hinge off of. Like this isn't really ready for a door. So I've thought many times about how would I make a door for this shape and I have some ideas but every idea I have feels cumbersome and it's like I don't want a door there I'd rather just be able to walk through it so I use just these thick fabrics to uh, keep the heat in when I'm heating the space and otherwise it's just an open portal um, and to that same point of the shapes being so important to me you can see around all of these windows, I really kind of went to town with just what I felt energetically. So I'm always just trying to make invisible energy visible. <laughs> As an artist, Cobb is a really exciting medium because it allows for unlimited expression. I had all these glass windows that I got for free, second hand, and I basically just got to play with the energy that I felt in each part of this space and sort of express it. And what that does in a living space for me is it keeps my imagination and sense of wonder engaged at all times. It's really important to me that I don't become complacent in any way. And so living in a space that everywhere you look is a piece of art really, really helps to keep that inner sense of wonder and inspiration intact and alive and engaged. There's really not much to this space because it's so small, but I knew that I wanted to be close to the stars when I'm sleeping. That's a really important thing for me. And so the idea of having a glass ceiling up in the loft sort of informed a lot of what happened after that. I was sort of, as I was framing, I was trying to just get up to where I was like, okay, this is a good place for me to sleep. <laughs> and so glass was really important. Those are both sliding glass doors that I used up there. And so it's tempered double pane glass. Um, and glass in general, I think is an amazing material. It's like, I want to see the outside world. And it's also a way of letting heat in, letting light in. Of course, it's also a way of losing heat, but we're not going to go down that rabbit hole right now. So underneath the loft um, is just this space where I can sort of create. Um, I like to just sit here and write, play guitar, connect with the fire, lay here and stretch. Um, underneath this, I actually have a bathtub. <laughs> um, baths are important to me as well. So I really just, it's a very small space, obviously. And it's like anyone who lives in a small space is going to make their priorities very apparent. For me, creativity is obviously up there. You know, the drum sets taking up a quarter of the floor space and then this big seat by the fire with the guitar and the desk for writing and the bath. It's like, that's all I need. And then somewhere to sleep. <laughs> um, so it's, it's really, for me, it's a beautiful thing to create a home space 
to be just as big as you need it to be, and then encourage yourself to connect with the outside world. So this eucalyptus wood has all these bark beetle marks. Um, this is from this beetle eating the outer layer of the wood. And I think that it's just the most beautiful art. Like, it's unbelievable to me. And so I really highlighted it wherever I could, especially laying in bed. I'm looking every morning at these patterns. And they're just such organic, flowing shapes that it really inspire the way that I do everything. It feels so attuned, or I mean, I, I'm the one attuning myself to whatever they're tuned into. You know, it's like, I'm trying to do this. This is my greatest inspiration right here, what those beetles are doing. And you know, what's actually really beautiful about the beetles is that they'll never see this. So they're making what I think is some of the greatest art on the planet. They'll never see it. They're just eating. And I ask myself, how am I doing that? How are my actions being viewed as art by some other beings that I have no comprehension of? I like to think of myself as the beetle and, and you know, on a more basic level, just the organic flowing shapes are like, that's, that's where it's at. It's just <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> This ceiling is woven arundo. Looks a lot like bamboo, a little bit different than bamboo. I got it from a creek downtown. They actually spray Roundup in that creek to try to kill the arundo. One of these silly human ideas about uh, what we think we need to do to take care of ecology, poison our water. Um, so I helped do the city a favor by harvesting some of this arundo and putting it to good use rather than poisoning us, poisoning us to get rid of it. Um, and then it was just a process. Me and some friends would just sort of like pass them through to each other and weave them and, and just find, discover these beautiful forms when you start to like overlap and weave. I thought, I think this turned out so wonderful and it's something that I just, lay in bed and look at often and just think, how did that happen? <laughs> I really feel that small natural homes like this are a solution to so many of our issues as a species right now. Um, houselessness being the number one that comes to mind. There are so many people who don't have a house. So many people who don't feel a sense of home as a human being. And I believe that everyone deserves to feel at home somewhere. So imagine a world where just because you're human, you have the right to a little bit of land to do this. It's tiny, it's 120 square feet with another couple hundred square feet for some fruit trees and a garden. And imagine if everyone just had this as a natural human right. Imagine how different the world would be. And imagine how much it would cost. Currently in our society, it's not very easy to legally create a home like this and live in it. You always have to find a loophole. Someone doesn't live in it. There's no plumbing, no electricity, certain square footage. And these are the loopholes that everyone has to jump through regardless of what materials you're building with. And I think it's really sad and really unfortunate that as a species, we don't just grant each other the right to feel at home. I believe in a future where natural building and self-made homes are accessible, and not only accessible, but guaranteed to all humans. That's what I really, I have faith in us. I have faith in humanity that we can overcome this weird, controlling space that we're in right now and move forward into a place where each individual is empowered to access their innate creativity and competency 
to create an interdependent lifestyle where everyone's needs are met. I've been watching my mind It's not mine It's not mine I've been following the time Oh, sick. <laughs>